So the escape cost me $20,000 and I'm going to be paying on it for 12 years. I hope I don't die first. <laughs> and it just doesn't fit. <laughs>
on this side and only one very small one on the other now, side. I, I don't know if you could pick this up on the camper, but this is three windows. But these tip out? Does this one move at no. all? Okay. And what on if... the other side, there's an escape hatch. What about the rooftop? And doesn't open at all. Oh, okay. So if you're in the market for a tiny camper, you have to have a roof vent. And if you're making a tiny camper, you have to have a yeah, roof vent. Definitely. Uh, heat rises and it gets humid. It gets very humid. Yeah, I was surprised with all the heat we had. I bought a small battery operated fan. Mm -hmm. um, and I was surprised that I could sleep even though it was like 87 degrees in there. But the vent windows vented more than I thought and I put the fan right up against the screen and blew out the hot air. So we um, have two adults and Ripple who's misbehaving while we're trying to film. He's fine. <laughs> um, Rip, you sit. Now, oh, she sees kids. But the humidity, you know, uh, an adult will release like a pint of humidity into the air in an eight hour period. So two adults and a dog that jumped in the lake um, you have an issue, the walls will drip. So just cracking the vent, even if it's not a power vent, goes a long way. But that is sorely missing if you don't have a rooftop vent. It, I, in the heat, it was, and I had my grandson in with me one night, and the humidity went an way ex, up. An extra person and yep. extra heat. So come around uh, the working side of the camper. I see a couple really nice features on the camper. It has a freshwater city connection, mm -hmm. so you don't have to fill up your reservoir. Have right. you used that? No. Nope. So uh, again, things to think about when we're looking for a camper, you uh, plug a hose up to this, it pressurizes the system and you'll have water to your taps and hot water heater without having to fill up your reservoir. This is the Suburban Furnace. So these can be run uh, boondocking. The battery will just run the fan, which is really nice. Have you been out winter camping or cold weather Not camping? yet. In my old camper I was, and I love clicking on the heater to get dressed. I don't leave it on all night or anything. I but... never thought that I would get a furnace in a tiny camper, but it is beyond a luxury for me now. It's also dry. So you close these vents because it's cold out. Um, it gets very, very humid. So the furnace will actually dry it out, which yeah. is nice. Uh, 30 amp shore power. That's 110. This is the outside shower. Is there a... That's a vent for your hot water heater, I bet. Probably, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, you have an outside GFCI. Yeah. So this is really nice. I might add one of these to the bushwhacker. It's really nice when you do have shore power to be able to have this, or you can run an inverter and spend a bunch of money once you... Right, uh, right. But uh, you said you don't go to shore power sites often. I, just to... I do either wilderness camping or state parks because I don't want crowds and I don't care to have a hookup. It doesn't matter to me. So we'll talk about energy and batteries in a second, but I'm assuming this is to the refrigerator. Yes. So this is where, and it's probably a Dometic, I'll check inside. But uh, does this run on gas? Yep. So are you or running electric. it now? Yep. So now there is, that's to not have to use your battery or shore power. Right. That's pretty nice because we're not going to town to get ice. Exactly. So how Well, you like I don't that? have a freezer. Okay. It's a little yeah. tiny refrigerator, it's, but it's enough. It's well, and it's still to be able to keep your perishables right. without, we're a little ways from town. Uh, they do have ice here if you want to spend Oh, 10 bucks a day or something. It's costing that. me five bucks a day to keep my cooler. Five bucks a day to keep the cooler, and you're by yourself. Right. So, I mean, I, I've done videos about this before, but you can spend a lot more on ice. I mean, I'm not always on... by myself, but yeah. it's the same system, whether there's two of us or one of us. Very nice. So before we hop inside, and I'm excited about that, uh, we're boondocking right now. I wanted to talk about uh, batteries, solar, stuff like that. So we were talking about how we're boondocking. Um, I prefer these sites out here, even at the state campground, they're bigger, yep. they're quieter, more privacy. they're nice, but there is more than one way to go boondocking. There is the techno campers like me that end up with hundreds of amp hours of lithium batteries and solar panels all over the place. Um, I'm noticing this is the battery that came with it. Yeah, they gave me a new battery when I bought it simple small lead acid battery so how we talked about the gas refrigerator but how are you staying out here um off grid without any solar without the big battery i don't use it except for my led lights 
this is the joy of being a minimalist. Yep. And you know, for those of us that came from tent camping, I assume you did your share of tent camping. Lots of it. <laughs> so you don't need to spend thousands of dollars. And if you listen, there's no generator that's nope. that's running around the campsite. So you can run your lights. Yep. Um, charge your phone if you have to. Or I can't charge the phone unless I'm hooked up. Oh, uh, do you have a USB port? No. Okay. Well, that's. I don't. That's if you're looking. I do have a plug. The folks but... at A Liner put some USB ports in this thing. <laughs> so, um, all right. So simple battery setup, and that is, I think, one of the most overlooked ways of going off grid for a long time, is that you don't necessarily have to buy the expensive gear. You can just not use electric. Now you have a fan. I'm sure. I have a battery, battery operated fan, and it. I've been camping a week. I haven't gone through batteries. It's just lasts a long time. Nowadays, the USB rechargeables, you can charge in your car when you're driving someplace. I then... have a couple of those little packs that you can charge at home and bring with you, and I haven't used them up in a week. Uh, while we're talking, I took a peek at this. Now, this is a seven pin plug that's been converted to a four pin plug. That means this trailer could charge the battery when you're driving, and it does have brakes. But you're not it using does, them. But I'm not using them. Not using them. So uh, I see a lot of discussion about this. It's a Subaru Forester. Do you? I'm. Some states you have to. It's the law in some states. But in others, it's not. Do you notice a big problem with the camper pushing you? I don't notice any problem with it, even downhills. It's. I, I want to be careful about what I say because that has been my experience and most owners experience but you'll still hear people say you know this is a 1500 pound trailer you load it up with gear 1800 pounds she's pulling it with a Subaru so if you're going through the Rockies it might be nice to have brakes but it hasn't stopped you from going in no and I I go I don't necessarily go the speed limit if I'm going <laughs> downhill I make sure that I'm being conservative and that I don't have to make sudden stops. Well, that uh, that's where we differ. I drive it like I stole it. So some of us need brakes, um, but I definitely love the minimalist approach. So let's take a peek inside. So for me, the most important part of a tiny camper is it's gotta be comfortable. It doesn't have to be huge. Everyone has different needs, but the step up from tent camping to using a tiny RV is really nice sleep and being able to just meet your basic needs there. How do you feel like the inside of the Ace, Acecape, <laughs> Escape is uh, for comfort? Um, not very. <laughs> this um, is the, uh, these are the real world honest reviews. Yeah, here. I mean, it looks great. It has a lot of nice features and, but there's a very tiny space. You can stand up to get dressed, but you know, if you lift your leg up to put your pants on or something, you're hitting a cupboard and um it's a little cramped it's very cramped no some of that's tiny camper living you know it, it, right mm -hmm. it's for some people it's not for others but as far as the bed you said that you had to make some mods i bought a mattress that was six inches thick because the, the foam is that they have is not very resilient and it's only three inches and it, it just wasn't sleepable no, that's not uncommon from the RV industry, but no. you had an on, uh, you didn't account for the side effect of raising it up. What, what happened when you raised it up? When I raised it up with a mattress, is every time I turn over, I hit the cupboards with my legs. <laughs> so for some of us, especially with the teardrops, there's a little cantilever there and it's our feet mm -hmm. that hit. But, uh, you know, yes, sometimes we got to get rid of the mattresses all together and buy, you know, and or buy a up. half, you know, a three inch mattress to go on top of it. So, um, as far as amenities, once again, I took a peek inside the camper. Uh, it has the Dometic fridge. It has the suburban furnace. Uh, you have this really nice screen door, pretty standard on bigger RVs, not so common on the tiny campers. That's uh, very nice. It, yeah, it, uh, there's some ventilation. You have a full-size door. There's the entrance to and the no back. Steps. So some of us, very nice. Some of us really love the classic teardrop shape. It is not an efficient shape. 
So when I saw the flat back on this, there's pros and cons for everything. This is not going to ride down the road as well because it's not as aerodynamic, but it gives you a full, no problem. Full entrance in and out. So that's really nice. I see it has the sink. There's a lot more storage than I'm used to with the bushwhacker, but for tiny campers, comfort is key. So if yeah. you're not comfortable, you're not gonna wanna go camping. So let me ask you, are you gonna stick with it? Nope, I oh. already plan to sell it when I get home. It's, it has some great features, definitely, but it's, there's enough discomfort in it that I'd rather get, I'd rather be in a tent, <laughs> frankly. Um, it runs well, everything works. It had a TV, but I took the TV out because it was right behind the stove, which is a poor design. And um, I just stuck a mirror in there, uh, which gave it a little bit of depth too. Now you had the classic A-liner uh, before you went with this, were you more happy with that? I was very happy with that. It was just old and beginning to leak. It was almost, well, it was like 17 years old. 17 years old and camper life is like 180 years. <laughs> but human but even at that, so. I, I would say an A-liner didn't have quite as much storage, still had, you know, it didn't have the water heater, but you could have water. And it had a furnace and it had a sink. Now, your A-liner that you had is here. Is that because you sold it to or gave it to a relative? I sold it to a relative. Okay. I was going to say, it wasn't just a coincidence right. that your old camper was done. Okay. All right. That would have been a DIY outdoor life first. This was really nice. And I think people learn from this style of real. Uh, but I guess the takeaway for me comes back to watching videos like this. But if you could have rented this for the for a, a trip do you think you would have figured some of those things out before i would have known not to buy it okay so i, I would say if we you know i don't want to speak for you but one recommendation out of this for me is uh you know see if you can go there's so many places now that you can go take it on a weekend trip and then go try something else because uh, you seem to love the outdoors. I do. And this is a tool to facilitate us getting outdoors more. Yep. yep. But it's got to be comfortable and it's got to meet your needs. So I'm sorry that this one isn't, but I wish you the best of luck next Thank time. You. And uh, do you know what you're getting next time? I'm still going to look for another collapsible A-liner because I love the one I had. It had all the amenities. I didn't use them like I don't use these. But um, it was so less than a minute to put it up and spacious comparatively. All right. Well, I will, if you're unfamiliar with that, I'll post a picture on the screen somewhere of those classic A liners. And I'll make sure to give you a, a tour on the channel of one of those because they're always an eye catcher when you see them at the campsite. It is definitely something new. Yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if we saw any trinkets here uh, that we featured in the video, I'll throw them in the description to help some people out. But thanks for watching.